Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're looking at nodes. So this will be the beginning of a large series. Hopefully by the end of the series you'll have the ability to create fairly complex materials. This is a beginner's course so there'll be lots of challenges throughout. So try and follow along because that will help cement your learning. And I'll be pausing the video so you can have a go with these things. I'm expecting some understanding of the interface, so do make sure you've checked out my beginner courses. All the playlists are in the description. If that's not detailed enough, there's a really good paid for course from CG Boost, which is really detailed and in depth and I can thoroughly recommend it. Again, links in the description. And before doing these exercises, I thoroughly recommend that you look at my introduction to materials and shaders, which is just the theory behind basic texturing for film and games. Lastly, you can visit my website, where I try and put all these different courses in order. Okay, so let's begin. So at the moment I'm using 2.82, and the best place to start is probably the shading tab over here. When I click on the shading tab, we see the node editor in the bottom and our viewport at the top, and it should switch to look dev mode up in the corner here. If you're in solid mode, you won't see the results of your shading. You must be in look dev mode or rendered mode, which gives you the results of your lights as well, and no background distractions. We're going to stick with look dev mode, one of the reasons for this is that it has an HDRI in the background already set up for us. We can use the scene lights as well, and we can use the scene world, but that means we need to set up our own HDRI. So I'll untick that, and I'll leave everything as the default. You can here rotate the background HDRI, and you can probably see some slight change in my cube, as the HDR image is lighting different parts of our scene. So this is acting like a big surrounding light source, shining lights, and reflections onto our object. And using an HDRI gives a nice realistic look because in our world and environments, we don't generally have just one light source like this. So if I click on the cube, you can see the basic material of that cube here. You can also see it over in the material properties tab over here. This is giving us all the information of our principled BSDF shader, which is just here. And this can look a bit daunting for beginners. So we will start at a simpler point to make things easier to understand. Now in any view, you can press Control Spacebar and that will maximize that view. There's a back to previous button here or Control Spacebar will take you back to your previous workspace settings. For now, I'm going to maximize the view with Control Spacebar and just explain a tiny bit about nodes. When you're in this view, you can use the period key on your numpad to zoom in on a node. So if I move these away and press period key, it zooms in on the node I've got selected. You can also press the home key to frame all your nodes. So if you ever get lost and can't find things, press the home button and it'll frame everything for you. So how do nodes work? The best way to understand it is that nodes go from left to right. So the principal shader is going into the material output. So it's starting here and finishing here. I don't know personally of any situations where you don't finish with a material output. So this is always your end point. So nodes are these big objects you can see here. You can add new nodes by going Shift A to add, and there's lots of nodes you can add here, or go to the Add menu up here. I'll add another shader just to show that happening. So let's add the Diffuse. And now we have another node above our principled BSDF node. The way we hook nodes together is with things called noodles, so these lines here. And I can change from the principled BSDF to the Diffuse by hooking up this node to the surface output. I'll press control space to go back and you can see the difference that's having, which is hardly anything. But if I click on this white box where it says base color and change the color to red, we can now see the cube becomes red and back to white when I hook up the diffuse. I can change these boxes by hovering over where they meet, my cursor changes and then I can left click and drag to move them around and we can have a bit more space for the shader editor. So that's one of the first things we can try together, is bringing in lots of different shaders and plugging them into the surface and seeing what they do. So Shift A to add, and there's shader just there. Let's add something like the glass, Shift A shader emission, Shift A shader glossy, and we've got our principled BSDF there, which is Shift A shader principled BSDF. And just see what happens to your object when you hook these up. So there's the glass, there's the emission, and there's the glossy. So just quickly have an experiment and see what those different things do. The next thing you can try is changing some of the sliders. So here's the roughness for the glossy. The less rough it is, the more shiny it is, and therefore it's reflecting our HDRI. 
So pause the video and have a quick go at that. Now it's probably nice to put our cube onto a floor. So I'm going to press Shift A to add a plane, scale it up slightly, and G, Z minus one. That will put it underneath the cube. Now you'll notice immediately that my nodes have disappeared. That's because I've got a new object and therefore I need to set up a new material for it. So if I click on the cube at the moment, you can see that the materials and nodes we've got are here still, but if I click on the plane, they all disappear. So the cube has a different material called material. I'm going to rename this cube material for now. And the plane has no material and you can create a new material here or you can go to the down arrow and choose a material that you've already made. I'm going to create a new one and I'll call this floor and we'll just change the base color here. So now when I click on my cube, I've got cube material there and I can change this around. And if I click on my floor, I've got my floor material here and I can change this around. Now, one thing that people may find difficult if I add a new object again, so shift A to add mesh UV sphere, and let's just grab that shift Z. So I'm not grabbing it in the Z axis and moving it across the floor over here. I'm going to share this material with the cube. So with this down arrow here, instead of pressing new, I click on that and choose cube material. Now when I change this material, so let's change the color of the diffuse here to a yellow. Both of them have changed. That's because they are sharing that cube material here. And lots of beginners find this very tricky and difficult to understand. But think of these materials like paint buckets. And both of these materials are painted with that same paint bucket. If we want a new material for our sphere, we can click on it and we can do one of two things. We can create a new material just here and that will create a new material but based on this one. Or we can just delete it here, which is the cross button here and create a new material. I'll call this sphere. And then I can change the color of this one to a blue, let's say. So I'm going to click on our cube again and go back to our shaders here. Now you may have noticed if I hook up my glass material to the surface output, that it goes all shiny, but it's not see-through. Now this is something to do with the way Eevee renders things. If I go to the render tab over here, we've got the render engine as Eevee. If I put it to cycles now, nothing will happen because the look dev mode uses Eevee. But if I go to the rendered mode, we can see lots changes. The glass material looks a lot more like glass now. We've got some shadows in our scene from our light, which is just up here. And our objects are starting to look a lot more realistic. Now cycles does have some limitations. If I move around, you can see that it takes a time to update over in the side here. And it's got this sort of graininess to it. We call these white dots fireflies and we call the rest noise. Two quick tips. You can speed up cycles by changing to your GPU. So I'm going to do that now. And you can see it going much faster when I move around. You will need to go to edit preferences system and under CUDA, you need to make sure your graphics card is enabled. If you don't see your graphics card, then it may be that it's not compatible. You can then close that down and you should then be able to see your graphics card over here. The one other thing that can make this look a bit nicer is putting up the samples. So under sampling, you can see when I put this up, it starts to become cleaner, but it does take a bit more time now to render. So it's important to understand that some of these different nodes will react differently in cycles to how they will in Eevee. The reason for this is that Eevee tries to be an instant renderer and cycles tries to be a more realistic renderer using ray tracing and light bounces. Whereas Eevee fakes those things. So if I go back to Eevee now by going to look dev mode, so I can still have the render engine as cycles and I can perhaps use that as my final output, but do all my work in Eevee, which is the same as look dev mode. I can start doing all my editing in real time and not have any of that noise and problems when moving around my viewport, especially when it gets a bit more complicated inside Eevee. The problem you'll have later on in the series is that some things aren't compatible with Eevee. So you'll notice that things like glass and emission don't work particularly well in Eevee, and we'll get into the crux of making them work later on. So I'm going to delete the glass, the emission, and the glossy for now. You'll notice it's all gone black because we've still got the material output there, but we've got nothing plugged in to tell it how to react to light. So we'll plug in the principled shader. Now the main thing you need to know about the principled shader for now is that the base color will change your color. 
And that's the primary thing to learn is there's your base color. The secondary thing to learn is the roughness. So that's the shininess. As you can see, it's going glossy looking there if I move around or the roughness if we pull it all the way up. And you can see it's all rough now. Now it is fun to change a lot of these different things and mess about. I would certainly encourage you to do that. But the main things to change are the base color and the roughness. The one other thing that's really good fun to change is the metallic. So if I put this all the way up to one, you can't see much difference at the moment. It just goes darker. But if I make this shiny, you can see it's fully reflective now. If I bring the metallic down, you can see it's got that sort of plasticky look and then up a shiny metal look. Generally speaking, this should be at zero or one. Things are either metallic or not. But the thing you'll want to use as a slider is the roughness channel. Okay, so it's time for your first challenge. You'll need a floor and three different UV spheres. So I'll delete the cube. I'll click on the UV sphere that we've already got made and duplicate it. So Shift D and then Shift Z to keep it on the floor so it doesn't move in the Z axis. And Shift D and Shift Z to move it over to the other side. I'll right click and shade smooth on each of these. So select them, right click, shade smooth. So they're nice and smooth. And remember that they all share the same material at the moment. So your challenge is to make a gold sphere, a silver sphere, and a shiny plastic sphere. Now a quick tip to help you remember how to do that. Remember you can create new materials up here and each of your balls will need to have a different material. At the moment they're sharing the sphere material. So have a go at that. Okay, so here's how I did it. Let's click on the first sphere and this will be our gold material. Now let's change the color then to a goldy color somewhere around here and all my spheres are changing. So obviously I'm going to have to create new textures for each of these, but I'll continue with this one for now. Now let's turn the metallic all the way up because gold is metallic and let's make it a bit shinier. So bring down the roughness so it becomes more glossy. And there we've got a rough sort of gold looking material. If I click on the color again, I could make the material slightly darker to give it a more sort of rich gold look or lighter over at the side here. Okay, so let's click on our next sphere and this one needs to be silver. So if I start changing this now and try and make it silver, it's changing all of them. So I'll click away and undo that with control Z. I need to create a new material. Now remember, I can either press this button here to create a new material based on this one here already or delete this material and create a new one. I'll do it that way this time and do it the other way for the next one. So I'll delete this material, it goes all white, create a new material and I'll change this to silver. So changing the color, bringing the roughness down, but it looks all plasticky. That's because I haven't brought my metallic up. And now we're starting to look more like silver and I can change the roughness of that silver, as you can see there. Okay, so for the last sphere, I said I was going to do it the other way, so here's the new material, and when I click on this, it doesn't look like anything's changed, but it's called this Sphere 001. So this one has Sphere, and this one has Sphere 001, so it's copied the material, but it's created a new one. That's really important. Now if I change the metallic all the way down to zero, we can see it's got that sort of plasticky look and we can change the color here by moving it maybe to the purple and changing the tone of the color over here. Okay, so now to render our image, we can look through our camera with zero on the numpad and there's my camera. I can press N on my keyboard to get up this panel and go to view, lock camera to view to move my camera into position so I can see all the spheres. Now at this point, if I press render, it will use cycles. So it's probably a good idea to press on the render tab to see what that's actually going to look like. Now it's looking nice and realistic. We've got some shadows in there and we can see the objects in the reflections, but we can't see the world in the reflections. And that's because we haven't yet set up an HDRI. And that's what Eevee has by default. If I go to Eevee, we can see our HDRI there. The scene looks much brighter and we've got some reflections in here of that background. But in cycles, we need to set that up. What we'll need to do is add an image to our background. We'll be adding images in the next episode, but for now we can change this background from this gray color to a different color by going across to the object mode here and going to the world workspace. Now we can see our background there, which is gray going into the world output. So it's very similar and it's got two nodes just like our material setup and we can change the color of the background just here. And I think it looks a lot better if we make it a bit brighter. 
we can then change the colors and you can see how those colors are actually affecting the colors within the scene so this color of light actually influences our scene so we might have a nighttime look for example you can also change the strength which is the amount of light given off by the background okay so in the next episode we'll be talking about how you can add images to your objects and images to your backgrounds thanks for watching and i'll see you next time